okay so i'm going to move to the next topic uh, which is strategy analysis mm, the two inter middle one k's are fairly simple i trust you can manage it themselves there's hardly anything new there uh, okay uh, can i request everybody to be on mute Alan, sorry we can come in can i just ask something yes please Yesterday you noted the total time in the exam was 180 minutes, which equates to three hours. No, no, no. That is and for that CCBA. Was no, it, 180 minutes is for CCBA. For you, it's 210 minutes. To 10, not to 40. No, to 10. So three and a half hours. Yes. Okay. Hmm. Now, you have lesser number of questions as well because the cases are long. So, for CCBA, we have 130 questions. For CBAP, it is 120 questions. For CBAP, it's 120? Yes. Okay, because on my, on my Prometrics form, it says 4 hours. No, that's... Me that no, no, no. Down? No, no, no. That means... See, there is a 15 minute preparation time. So they include all that. The real exam would be for three and a half. Okay, got it. Thank hmm. you. Okay, so where were we? We. Sorry, I have to go face down. This is still the second chapter. So let me go to third. Then I have to go to the fifth chapter. I don't have, unfortunately, a good way to go down. Uh, let me just do a control F. Does it work? If control F works. No, control F also doesn't work for some reason. Okay, these are all we know. Prototyping. Maybe I think I'll explain one thing about prototypes. Uh, there are different kind of prototypes that uh, Babok talks of, so it's good to know. Uh, one, we call it as throwaway prototype, which means you make something and you don't intend to use it in your final product. So anything you have done a rough sketch would be called a throwaway prototype. And then there is a concept called evolutionary or functional prototype. Uh, where you actually build a functional product at a lowest level of feature and then you keep enhancing the product. So in fact, if you see Agile as a method, it is essentially evolutionary prototyping approach. Okay. Then there are different kinds of prototyping we may do. One, we sometimes do something called a proof of principle or concept which is essentially to get technical feasibility checked. Then we also may do a form study prototype, which is to get a physical uh, feel of a product. Uh, like if you are designing a phone or a tablet, uh, a form study prototype can be helpful. Uh, usability prototype is the user interaction aspects. Um, visual prototypes are um, very focused on how the solution looks like. So a lot of people call it as mock-up. Um, so, and I have actually seen very nice mock-ups. They really look almost like the actual product. Uh, and then of course you have a functional prototype which I explained before. Then you have concept like storyboarding where you describe the sequence of activities using characters. Uh, paper prototyping is using paper. Workflow modeling is using some kind of a tool and you could also do some simulation uh, using a tool. Like I know there is a very famous free tool called Bizazi BPM uh, which you can download and use and you can actually do a lot of process simulations using that tool. So if your demand is like this, how much time is the process going to take? All that simulation you can do using that tool. This is something I wanted uh, probably a little bit more. I think rest all you guys can read. There isn't much. Elicitation is fairly simple topic. Mm. Fairly easy to understand. 
but then the next topic lcm is also fairly simple maybe what i would like uh, to cover couple of minutes on different kinds of traceability which i trust all of you would know uh, but i'm sure you will get some question on uh, that uh, okay um, we talked about this uh, business policy business rules um, can somebody tell me which comes first rules come first or policies come first policies first then rules correct policies come first uh, in fact for an organization the, if you look at the hierarchy uh, it's possibly this um, whatever experience i have gathered with my clients uh, usually i would see it in this way insert a smart art and if i go look at the pyramid uh, at the highest level you have regulation regulation which usually comes from your um, government bodies then comes the policies which is formed by the organization and then comes the rules uh, which are formed again to follow uh, the policies so if you must have uh, policies catering to the regulation uh, because if you don't have policies catering to regulation uh, you can run into trouble okay uh, so for example in uk uh, there is a regulation called anti bribery law and as per anti bribery law if your company is caught um, in some kind of a uh, situation where uh, anybody from your company has paid money to a government agency um, to get something done then you will be banned from doing business in uk for 10 years so obviously companies should not take chances and to do that they should create policies which will kind of uh, adhere to the regulation they may do more policies because regulation is for everybody for every company whereas policies are for your company you may create your own policies in terms of uh, leave policy or whatever benefits policy rewards policy and then of course you make your rules to adhere to the policy okay so then in babok it talks of two kinds of rules which i think uh, as cba folks you should remember one we call it as definitional rule which means um, a definition that does some calculation or gives some kind of a grouping okay so like here i have given an example gross margin is equal to revenue minus variable cost of production that's a definitional rule and behavioral rule means what should be practiced by the stakeholders that's what we call it as behavioral rule okay then comes this is something i think very simple prioritization is i think fairly simple mm, reviews are also something you will know okay then i uh, go down to user stories i think user stories all of you may be quite familiar so these are simple sentences of requirements um, usually it's a stakeholder requirement in the classic babok sense we would have called it as a uh, stakeholder requirement it's something like this as a pm i should be able to upload mpp file to sync my project schedule with the system okay. then this is okay tracing i think this is what i wanted to tell uh, these are the four relationships uh, which i think i would like you to keep in mind um, the derived relationship is your parent child relationship depend means two requirements have mutual interdependence or maybe one requirement is dependent on other satisfy means a component satisfying a requirement uh, fulfilling a requirement in a sense and validate means a test case validating a requirement okay so these are all fine 
this I trust uh, Laura or somebody would have covered for you the theory part and then I go to strategy analysis. In strategy analysis there are actually many techniques which are very important for CBAP. So let me explain some of those techniques. Balance scorecard, all of you are clear. What is balance scorecard? Yes, sir. Anything rings a bell? Maybe just a, a few statements, a little more details. Okay. Um, essentially, a balance scorecard is created to get a holistic view of an organization's performance. Could be a unit, could be a project as well. Um, and we are looking at multiple dimensions. So one we look at learning dimension, one we look at process dimension, we look at customer dimension and we look at financial dimension. Uh, traditionally, companies were measuring themselves on primarily financial dimension and ignoring other dimensions. Whereas a organization is going to do well only when it focuses on all dimensions, not only on one dimension. That is what um, Balance Scorecard tries to tell us. Okay. Benchmarking I think is fairly simple. It's comparing yourself against some competitor or somebody who does something great. So huh, now comes something called business capability analysis which is very important and Babak has given a very um, comprehensive diagram but I, I never felt that most people get a sense out of it. So I created a uh, business model canvas for myself. So I'll show you that template what I created and maybe that's a much simpler one to understand. Not what Babok prescribes but from an understanding perspective uh, it can be quite helpful. Not here. No, not here. Maybe it must be right here. I'll give you all this Excel, don't worry. Um, so this is what I called it as a simple capability map. So what am I trying to map in this particular diagram? One, I look at a capability from two dimensions. One, how critical is the capability to the organization and how are we performing with respect to that capability? Okay, say so for example, uh, we as an organization, we have to have many capabilities to be successful. One is our content creation, program delivery, client relationship, content development, content conversion. These are a lot of work that we do. And one of the things that we need to do very well today is to do good digital marketing. Because the world has become quite digital today compared to say 15 years back when a lot of things were physical. So you have to put advertisements, you have to go and meet customers in person to get something done. Today customers are far more aware. They know exactly what, which company is doing what. And they have access to far more information than they used to have in the past. So unless you are visible in the digital marketplace, you are not going to get any business or you are going to get significantly less business. So this is something I created indicating if there is a um, uh, capability which is critical and you are not doing well, that's a danger zone for you. Hmm. So I created this map and I think this is a very very simplified form of capability map which I believe uh, can be quite helpful. Okay, then comes business case. I trust all of you know the concept of business case. A business case essentially 
um, is an investment proposal. Suppose uh, we are looking at uh, investing into a new server for ourselves and that's going to cost us money. It's not free. Um, so which server should we go for? Should we go for option one, option two, option three? Um, and based on that, we have to take a call that option one costs so much. This is what it will give us. Option two will be so much money. This is what it will give us. So which one should we go for? Okay. So that is part of your business case. And then there is also a concept called business model canvas, which I trust maybe we would have covered it um, kind of covered it in very uh, low level uh, but this is what uh, a good example of a business model canvas so if you look at it the right side is more about revenue side the left side is more about cost so for this particular stand if you see uh, which customer segment it is trying to attract it's the visitors how does it maintain relationship with its customers through a personal interaction? How does it sell its products through booth and through a website? And how does it make money through lemonade sales and some tips? And the value proposition is something that you offer to the customer saying why the customer should buy from you, not from your competitor. So it's cold testing natural lemonade on the go. Then the key activities that the company carries out, the key resources that the company needs, the partners that the company needs, and the cost structure that the company has. So as a business, our aim would be to improve revenue and reduce cost. Um, and that's what uh, uh, we try to do. A lot of times we try to do, um, uh, as I was telling you, we are through a process and we could not get it right RPA tool so far. Um, so we did a semi automation. So we are not 100% automated, neither we are 100% manual. So we are somewhere in between. Uh, it's like 50% automation, 50% manual. But our aim is to get the process fully automated. In that case, we will start saving our uh, manpower cost. Okay, so this is the business model canvas. So here it talks about value added activity, non value added activity, all these things it talks about. Then I think I would have something on um, not uh, this thing. Ah, this is what I wanted to spend a little more time uh, because for CBAP, you guys should be a bit more comfortable with numbers. Okay, and there are some definitions which I would take you through and I hope all of us will be on the same page. There is a term called cost of change, which is essentially your expected cost of building or acquiring a solution and the cost of transitioning the solution to the workplace. That's what is called cost of change. Then there is a term called total cost of ownership, which is cost of change plus uses cost plus support cost for a period. So generally TCO would be calculated for three year period or five year period. Opportunity cost is value of the next best alternative which is not pursued. Uh, a sunk cost is something that you have put the money but you can't recover. Net benefit is expected total benefit minus expected total cost. Return on investment is net benefits into 100 by cost of change. Okay, up to this, I think you should be comfortable. Uh, discount rate as a concept, you may know, uh, like it's usually interest rate plus a risk premium. Uh, and then free cash flow is net cash flow after all costs are taken care of. There's a definition for present value and net present value and IRR. I don't expect any question will come. Uh, but it's good to know, especially when you are talking to your stakeholders, uh, at least you understand these terms. Uh, can anybody explain me what's the present value of funds or money? 
what does it mean abbas yes the value of the money which will be generated in the future after how many year period uh, with the percentage true so essentially what it means so is I'm going to get in the future after 4 years you have to bring it to today's price yes and usually economies have inflation so your present value would typically be less than future value mm, is there an economy where prices are going down very unlikely i i haven't seen much in last 30 years maybe temporarily there is a setback sometimes prices do go up and down uh, but in general prices have been increasing over the years then there is a term called payback period which is the time period required to generate enough benefits to recover cost of change okay so these are some definitions that you guys should keep in mind these are all fine SWOT analysis is fairly simple good so these are the techniques that i wanted to cover a little bit in detail and then we are going to start with the cases Uh, I think Jesse joined back. Jesse, you can see the screen now. Yes, I can. Sorry, we've got storms in the area, so my mind keeps dropping. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay. No problem, I think. Anyway, it's recorded, so whatever little part you left, it will be there in the recording. Okay, so now let me go to the question bank and pick up cases for strategy analysis mm, where is strategy analysis and let's take so we had gone till i think murat in the last round so this time we will start with rahul too small. I think this is okay, Raul, to read. Okay, can I go down? Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. Okay.
सकती ओके समातर समातर से सी ओके स्वेतलाना Okay, um, maybe by the time Master gives the answer, Raul, if you remember, um, what is the possible negative impacts? What is that term? Raul? Uh, risk. Yes. So, what are you doing? See, you are trying to minimize the negative impact. So that means you are trying to assess the risks and control the risks. Okay, so some of you gave C, which I know, um, I think that was a good read. But essentially, the team is trying to assess the risk and minimize the risk. Okay. Then the next question goes to Samatara. Okay, I think you have to probably read the only the last paragraph. Samatara. I'm not sure about this one. Okay. I'm gonna say A. Ah, okay. Uh, Svetlana. I would say competitors. Because everything else kind of affects the competitors also, so I'm not sure. Okay, Andrea. Customers affects. <laughs> Andrea. Um, my guess was political and regulatory, though I could see if you were like HIPAA, that would matter. But competitors, I thought if they had something at a cheaper price, then that could affect your decision. The industry, maybe there's norms there, suppliers and technology. If you can't buy it then you can't do it true i think i will go with d the other three are probably more important anytime you are in business competitors are there you can't really have a business where there's no competition uh, there can be some businesses where there are no competition but that's mostly government organizations Is because when it comes to cloud data management, regulation plays a major impact in that. And so most companies do not go to the cloud 
to put their data there because of the regulation. I, I understand. So having their data in a different country. I think well, then I'll the probably country. request uh, the team just to keep it as macroeconomic factors. Maybe that's probably the most odd one out among the four. Okay, so let me just make a note and I will possibly ask uh, Fatima to make it make option for only macro economic economic factors. I think political regulatory regulatory environments do affect a uh, lot of decisions. Okay, sorry, where was I? Just here. Okay, so okay. Now this question goes to Swetlana. Performing gap analysis at ABC. Okay. Yes, sir. Hello, yes, sir. Ah, okay. Is your microphone not working, yes, sir? I didn't hear you at all during the program. At least I heard all others. Oh, it is not working. Okay, no problem. Go ahead. Yeah. That's okay. Don't worry. It's more Q and A. So as long as you get to understand the question and answer me, I'm okay. JC, what would be your choice? I'd say A. Mm, okay. What are you trying to do, JC? Change the company over onto a new system. No. And identify the difference between, so it could be a gap analysis. Sure. The correct answer is gap analysis. Okay. A gap analysis tells you what you need to have and what you have. And I think a lot of these product solutions when we implement, we usually do a gap analysis, seeing what the company wants, what we have, this is the gap, how do we fulfill the gap. Uh, that's a very typical thing that I did as an ERP analyst. Because whenever I would go to a client place and they will give us a lot of requirements saying this is what we want uh, the solution to do, then we will pick up the requirements, we will look at the product and say, oh, this requirement, it cannot be met by the product because the product doesn't have that feature, this requirement comes out of the box, this requirement can be done with a configuration change, we'll do all that analysis and then give a report to the client. Okay. Then this one is for Yasser. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, I do hear you now. Okay, this is the same story everywhere. It's 
story doesn't change except the paragraph, last paragraph changes. Actually, I'm very glad these questions were prepared by, by my colleague Bob Churchill. And Bob has set really high standards in terms of question setting. Okay. Because they're they're looking at the current state. Mm -hmm. And so they wanted to find the scope. Mm -hmm. yeah, I would go B. Okay. Um others, what's the opinion? Are you doing a change strategy, a solution scope or a gap analysis? Too. True. That's the right answer. It's solution scope. That means um, how the project will be carried out, what will be part of the project, what will not be part of the project. So that's what they're trying to uh, offer to their client that as a company, this is what we can do for you. Okay. Very right. So I think maybe see, let me see if there is any other question here. Ah, okay. This is one more question. So this one goes back to a bus. Right. So basically what you are trying to say is what do we offer and how does it add value to the client? Okay, so I think the next question would be far different. Okay, there is a there is a mathematical problem. Uh, maybe if time permits we will take this up. Uh, but maybe I can stop here uh, because I still have to cover a lot of details about RAD uh, before we uh, do some questions on RAD as well. I think yesterday we couldn't do much questions on RAD. So today we can do a bit more questions on RAD. And maybe if time permits, bit questions on solution evaluation as well. Okay. Uh, but remember this formulas, few formulas I gave you um, and focus on the calculations which you can do mentally. Usually the questions will be such that uh, you do not require a calculator to come up with numbers. Okay. So now let's go back to the next topic, uh, which is our RAD area. Hmm. We come to that. And there are quite a few techniques which um, I would like you to cover. Um, is concept model something clear to you folks? Because I had great difficulty in understanding concept model initially. Because the language um, usually kind of interferes with something called glossary. Any any idea what is a concept model? And what's a glossary?
anyone can help me taking so long to open this diagram are you looking are you looking for a definition of glossary or how how do these two actually uh, work together actually there are three uh, uh, models which are related to each other mm, one of course is glossary then you have concept model and you have data model and again in data model you have three layers mm, okay maybe some people also include concept model as part of data model as well so at least three levels we can see glossary concept model data model how do they link to each other anyone glossary defines the data elements I'm not sure about the content okay no glossary is not intended to give you data elements glossary's purpose is to describe the terms in an unambiguous way to the business and technical stakeholders um, see for example terms we use in english can mean very different in a particular domain um, some of you have knowledge of accounting anyone has some knowledge of accounting no one okay <laughs> okay so if you if you read accounting uh, there's a term called asset and there's a term called liability it's very very basic definition when we talk of accounting so we talk of debit credit okay so what is asset in English if you just talk of general English what does asset mean something you possess of correct something of value, value money correct in your yes something of value that's what we say usually asset so when we say uh, this person is an asset to the organization what we say is that this person is valuable to the organization hmm. whereas in accounting terms an asset is something which is where money is invested okay so for accounting loss is an asset what is loss loss is the money that you invested on which you will not get any return okay so now you can see asset has a specific meaning when we come to accounting so a glossary would actually explain the terms to you and sometimes the glossary can be quite funny as well uh, like i worked with a client and they used to use a word called fat albert <laughs> so you must be thinking fat albert must be a person and for some reason people have started calling the person as fat albert but fat albert actually was a system i don't know who gave that system name but it was supposed to be the repository of all documents that the company has that's what was called fat albert and then we used to have a module called hero module um, so i used to ask why this module is called hero module nobody knows but the module is called hero module so glossary is very helpful because without a glossary it's very hard to understand business whereas when you come to concept model what you are trying to do you are trying to link this glossary okay say for example if i just take our succeed platform itself if you see we have courses we have participants we have trainers we have workshops we have content okay and you can see the relationship between them like workshop has multiple participants 
a participant attends multiple workshops, a trainer tends participants, a trainer develops content. You can create your own model as you can see. Okay, so this is how a concept model looks like. Uh, I initially took the Babok concept model, but I found it little difficult and sometimes people ask me, Ellen, what is this Babok concept model or core concept model? Um, I think I'll pick up a diagram which is little better. Um, it's not that readable here. So what Babok core concept model is telling us is for a change, there are six key elements. And these six elements interact with each other. See, for example, a change would have a context. A context means the prevailing situation. Why are you looking for a change? A context would involve market. It would involve political environment, technological change. These are context for an organization. Then it would have a solution because any change has to be implemented through a solution, a change comes because of need, a need would come from stakeholders, any change should drive some value. This is how the Babok, sorry, the Babok core concept model is actually built. Okay. It's actually a nice model. Uh, I, I really liked it. It's fairly comprehensive as well. I think data dictionary all of you would probably know. It's a good description of your data elements. And I actually extended the data dictionary quite a lot. Uh, I can show you the data dictionary that I use. And maybe you can also use in your project. Uh, give me a second. Where did I keep it? One second. My data dictionary is about 22 columns. Uh, this Today, I think some update happened and it made my fonts very small. I have to go back and check. D drive, courseware. Yes, it should be here. Templates. And if I look at. Uh, sorry. Templates, sorry. Uh, if you see here, uh, matrix model columns. Yeah. This is how I have created my data model, uh, data dictionary. And if you see here, I have close to how many columns? About 22, 23 columns. Okay. And I feel if I can define this level of data dictionary, uh, my developers are better off because they don't have to assume anything. When I don't do this, they typically tend to assume something from their mind which may not be the right thing to do. That's why I created uh, such a comprehensive data dictionary. Okay, so this is what is data dictionary. Data flow diagram I trust all of you would probably know. It's nothing very difficult to understand. Um, data mining, again I am not a data mining expert. Um, anybody who has done data mining work here? Anyone who has done some data analysis, data mining or business intelligence project? No one? This is something that I would like to learn personally, but I am still little behind. Rahul, you have done some project in this area? Ah, okay, very good. But I think BI is getting enhanced quite a lot. People talk of data science and whatnot, uh, and, and it's very mathematical as well. That's what I see. <laughs> uh, so, if you see here, there is something called descriptive statistics, diagonistic, then predictive, um, all kinds of complex terms are used. And I, I am actually going to, I'm talking to a fairly large university uh, to kind of design a course, which is business analysis in data science projects. So I think once I work in that project, maybe I'll get a good idea about 
what this data science is, data scientists talk about okay um, then conceptual data model I explain uh, I think the data model I would show you and probably explain you a little bit more uh, especially using the class model so give me a second this is something that I want you guys to have a good look Presentation exploitation courseware wired and solution evaluation. Ah, this is what I wanted to cover mm, mainly the UML part. Okay. okay. I think UML is something that uh, you are expected to answer in CBAP. So I thought I'll keep it for this session. Um, all of you are comfortable with UML diagrams, uh, at least the use case diagram. What is include, extend? You remember we discussed it, I think in the CCPA class, did we or no? I'm not sure, I'm also forgetting. Svetlana? Not in detail, okay. Uh, so remember this, an include function is essentially a common function which can be used by many use cases. So in a sense, an include use case helps you in reusable requirements and reusable functionality. Extend is the one where an additional functionality is provided. Okay, And this is what we call it as system boundary actors and use cases. So this, I think I will put it in the drive as well. And I have given a couple of uh, reading. I really like this book by Howard, uh, which is UML for IT business analyst. Uh, because when I started my career as an IT business analyst, I didn't have to go through UML because I was mostly working uh, as an ERP analyst. And in ERP world, we typically don't use UML. UML is mostly in app dev uh, world. Okay, then comes use case specifications uh, where we write about each um, each step and all that. Uh, I trust many of you would know use case specifications. Okay, I will show you a small video that I created on use case specifications, maybe that is a little bit helpful uh, if you are not familiar with use case specifications. Mm, give me a second. Use case template, maybe this is the one. Use cases are very popular technique to describe features of a solution. Key concepts behind use case are actors users who use the system and use cases functions the system provides. Let's understand use case with a very simple use case, the log in use case for a product. Each use case has a goal. The goal is what the use case tries to achieve. For example, here the goal is to provide access to the application for the authenticated users. Use case has a precondition, which indicates conditions to be satisfied prior to the use case. For example, the user needs to have a legitimate login profile and password for using this use case. Success end condition indicates the end state if the use case is successful. Here success end condition is to get access to the home page. Failed end condition indicates the state if the use case fails, say to redirect the person, to forgot password page or lock the account. Primary actor indicates to an actor who initiates the use case. Secondary actor participates in the use case once the primary actor initiates the use case. For example, the password may be reset by administrator if the password is locked. Trigger indicates how the use case gets activated. For example, 
This use case gets activated when the user clicks on login button. The activity description provides steps of the processing. For example, here user visits the URL for the login page. After that the user inputs profile and password and clicks on the submit button. Then the system validates the inputs and accepts or rejects the login. There can be branching actions or exceptions in a process. For example, if inputs are incomplete, the system may provide the alert message indicating the user has not provided the username or password. Use cases can have relationship with other use cases. Use cases also can have priority, which indicates how critical the use case from the business perspective is. One can also mention specific performance requirements and assumptions for the use case. This is something we created long back. Um, earlier days, use case specifications were used quite more. Uh, today, I see in um, some of the agile projects, people using use case specifications as acceptance criteria. So in the acceptance criteria, actually they write all these steps. Okay, then scenarios I explained. Okay, so maybe we can take a break now for 15 minutes. We will come back and we will try to understand the class model and whatever models are remaining and then take a look at the questions from um, requirements analysis area. If we get time, we will also look at solution evaluation area. Okay.